Welcome to Time in the Word. We'll begin with a brief prayer as usual. Brief, but important. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you are with us, caring for us, and revealing more of your love and yourself to us, dear God. You are an awesome God. Each one of us today, hearing this, shall be blessed by you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It's your plan, Jesus. Well, we want to begin from Matthew 6, and you'll be familiar with this, which begins this way. Jesus said, pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Well, hallowed be thy name. That's been our subject, thy name. For many weeks, we've been studying the different names of God all of which are revelations of God himself and are included in those words, thy name. All his names are included in that one word, thy name. In today's study, we pause to focus on what the scriptures reveal to us about the names of the Lord being written in the hearts of his people. Let's begin with the consideration of what the Lord's Prayer says to us about his, his name. Likely, this prayer is the only time most people even use the word Hallowed or pause to consider its meaning. Hallowed means honored, divine, and holy. While we may rightfully mean to say in our prayers, I'm praying this Lord's Prayer, that you are all this, Lord, how do it be thy name? But we do well to ask ourselves, do I both believe and regard you as hallowed, trusted, my Lord in whom I rely upon? Moreover, do I lean on and celebrate you as advocate, almighty, savior, friend, guide, light, love, and all the many other ways you have revealed yourself to me. Sometimes our prayers could include giving him glory that he is so wonderful and then rejoice that he is impressing all that he is into my heart. New looks are coming to us. As we look to, into the book of Revelation, we're going to see new looks are coming. In Revelation, the Word tells us more about our Lord and our hearts. The Lord and our hearts. They are connected. When his children enter the New Jerusalem, the Word reveals in 22.4, that we shall see his face and his name shall be on our foreheads. We shall see his face and his name shall be on our foreheads. We will see God's face then as Moses so wanted to see, so much longed to see, but couldn't. We will see it then because we will have been made like him. We might want to look over at Moses on that day and say, hey, he did it, Jesus. He did it, Moses. <laughs> so we're go we will be made like him. We will be able to see him because, again, we will then be made like him. Do you hear that? Sure you do. I mean, in your heart, made like him. Is there anything greater in your future than that and mine? No way. Look what his love does. 1 John 3, 2. We are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We will be like him. We shall see him just as he is. Hallelujah. 
be like him and see him well no one could see before just like he is look what God will do in you oh oh how he loves us oh how he loves us we will surely see in him when we look we will we will surely see in him welcome we will see intense love for us joy smiling and so much more showing us all of himself how long will that go on there's so much of him to see and to know what but we want to be like him oh what a god now did did notice that uh, not readily apparent here is that the hebrew word for face we will as it says we will see his face the word face there's plural so people wonder when they talk about this when it says we will see his face so not only the 144,000 end times servants will have his name written on them for show so shall his other children who serve him according to revelation 22 3 are his names his revelation of himself in your heart now his revelation of himself are his names in your heart now Surely, in the Spirit, our focusing on His names, our desiring, trusting in, and relying on them now will keep us on the pathway to more and more of Him and thus become changed into His very likeness. There is a pathway. It's going to happen, but being in his, his names now will continue us on the pathway toward his likeness. So, he said we have new looks and new names. New names in glory are being written now. To the hungry heart, there's more about this in Revelation chapter 3. However, we must be careful about reading in that portion of Scripture where the letters are addressed to churches. We must be careful that because we may read thinking they are specific words for the churches mentioned. And yes, they do are for the churches mentioned. But they, these words were passed around to all the churches from the beginning because they are for all of us. Even the words from verse 12. Revelation 3.12, quote, He who overcomes, he who overcomes, how will we overcome? By God, in God, with God. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it anymore. He will make us pillars. Solomon built two pillars in the first temple and named them Yachin, strength, and Boaz, power, strength and power. And with these, his beloved, those who overcome now, his beloved, those who overcome now with his strength and power, Yachin and Boaz, will be able to serve God and reign with him in God's own power. Next, we're told that these will not leave the temple anymore. Within the context of this chapter 3, and the word to Philadelphia, but to all of us, within the context we learn that there is a tremendous time of testing coming, but his people will be secure then and secure in the coming new Jerusalem. These words indicate the planning and provision for his people that to overcome that God has made. In every trial then, we overcome in his strength and by his provision for that place. 
those, these words were written for us in every one of our trials. He's equipping us. He, he is thorough. He, he, he told that these times were coming. He knows they're coming. He knows the trials that are coming into your life. And He is preparing you for them. And in them, He is with you to make you an overcomer. Because He loves you. Thank you, Lord. There's still more in verse 12. Jesus reveals that overcomers will have these names written on them. Three, three names will be written on his people. The name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem, and my new name. Now, the name of the city of God the new Jerusalem, he says, uh, uh, there's a new name coming, the name of the city of his God, that may be what the prophet said in Isaiah 62, 2 and 4, where the two words there for the new Jerusalem are delightfully married. So fitting for Christ and the church, his bride. That God will say on his new Jerusalem, delightfully married. God, delightfully married. Yes, we delightfully married to him. And him, delightfully married to us. To you. He wants you. Oh, he loves you and me. The new name of Christ, he said, so the other, other uh, name that of the three, the a new name that he has, new name of Christ. That may be what's in Revelation 19, 6, 16, where he's returning with his armies and written on him are the words, King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. He is and will be forever. King of kings and Lord of lords. Considering that God's overcomers will have this or these wonderful and holy names upon them, we should certainly believe that His Spirit is already working within us the life of these names, which will ultimately be where they may be seen by all. The names are going to be seen by all ultimately, but he's working them inside now in our hearts. We're told in Jeremiah 31, 3 that God promises to write his law on our hearts. The law of God, which is love, everything is from God's love. The law of God, which is love, is being written, for he will continue to write his law of love upon our hearts until that day when we see the love of God in himself face to face. He did not just write a few words once. He's continuing to write because he's such an awesome God. He's continuing to write of himself on you and me until the time when he's got it all there. So, but let's remember then our God overcomes and he gets the last word. Just as the enemy will write his name on the forehead or the right arm of unbelievers, so God's people will be marked on their foreheads with his glorious name. We close with 2 Corinthians 3.3, 3, which reminds us of this. You are a letter of Christ. You are a letter of Christ written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God on tablets of human hearts, His chosen people. God is with us. He loves us. Bless you.